a simple way to finance your short-term and mid-term rental property. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Jeff Trevarthan, Jeff, the Mortgage Pro here. Thanks so much for watching the videos today. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing great. Uh, I got a great topic today that I have discovered that I really like uh, working on in terms of loans. And uh, I really like talking to people about this particular topic, but it's about DSCR loans. So let's talk about uh, DSCR loans for a little bit. Debt service coverage ratio is what DSCR stands for. And it's basically a loan for investors to buy property based on the cash flow of the property itself, not based on the personal income of the borrower trying to buy the investment property. So it's really cool to be able to do that. It's a alternative to the conventional financing that most people know about. And this DSCR is a, is a great way to go. If you um, are a more sophisticated investor, if you're a beginning investor that doesn't have personal income, it's a great solution to help you get into more property so you can and grow your portfolio over time with real estate. So let's look at some of the different things here. Um, the reason why I like DSCR loans for uh, short-term and mid-term rentals is usually that the debt service coverage ratio is really high. Meaning when the debt service coverage ratio is over one, that means the property is gonna cash flow. But if it's closer to two or even two and a half, that means the property is generating so much income coming in. And oftentimes short-term rentals definitely have that, uh, especially if it's in a vacation area, a great location, you can generate a lot of income compared to what the mortgage payment is gonna be. And the same thing with the midterm rental, when you have maybe traveling nurses or traveling flight attendants uh, that need to stay in places for a certain amount of time, but they don't need to stay there all the time. Those are examples of things that you could use with a midterm type of a rental property. And those things generate a lot of income as well. Usually the units are furnished in those instances, but a great way to go is the DSCR loan to finance those types of properties. So here's some of the guidelines that you need to look out for when you are doing these types of loans. Uh, the minimum loan amount is gonna be $100,000. Some people will go lower than that. Um, I just don't see it very much. It gets really, really expensive when you go in under $100,000 in terms of discount points to pay to be able to get this particular loan. So anything over $100,000 is what we're looking for. Usually a maximum amount up to about $2 million. Now, the biggest one that I've ever done is a million. Um, if you have a $2 million debt service coverage ratio uh, loan, I would love to be able to do it for you. Um, and that means the property is really, 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 really going to have to cash flow, especially from one to four units, because that's what we can use these particular loans on. Okay. Uh, these are for purchases, rate and term refinances and cash out refinances. So if you need to get cash out of a property, uh, because it has a lot of equity in it, debt service coverage ratio could be the way to go, especially if it's a short term or a midterm rental. Um, there's no, this is the huge benefit of a DSCR loan. There's no personal income required on these types of loans. So if you don't make any money, uh, that's okay because the income of the property is going to help tell the tale of whether we can get a loan on this type of a, you know, scenario or not. Okay. So watch out for that. So if it's okay, uh, you know, if you don't have any income, that's okay. You can still potentially qualify for a DSCR loan. Um, there is no limit to the number of properties you have. Now, most investors will limit the number of loans that they have with you, but that's for exposure purposes. They want to limit their risk as well. But if you go to different companies, you can find DSCRs at many different places right now. I have the resources to be able to help you with those different DSCR loans. So make sure that you let me know if you're looking for that. But there's no limit to the number of properties that you own when you have DSCR loans. Um, they come in 30 year fixed options. Uh, that's the most common one that I see. And they also come in arm loans, 5-1, 7-1, uh, even a 10-1 in some instances are uh, available for DSCR loans. Interest only is available. Now, I really like this option um, as rates come down because that's just going to increase your cash flow of your property, <laughs> right? The minimum amount that you can pay every month is just the interest only payment. And if you have that feature available for you, you can maximize the cash flow that's coming in from your rental unit, the one to four rental units, okay? Um, you need as little as six months reserves. Now, just remember what a reserve is. It's a principal interest taxes and insurance is one month of payment. That's one month of reserves reserves. And we need a minimum of six. So this can be in the form of extra cash that you have in the bank. This could be stocks, bonds, IRAs, 401ks, 
lots of different things that you can use as reserves. Now, this isn't money that you have to put into the transaction. This is just money that uh, is a risk calculation for a lender. They want to see that you have the financial capacity to make up for a payment if a renter doesn't pay or if you're, you know, if you're uh, seasonality or things like that. So make sure that you have those reserves in the bank, um, you know, just available so that we can get you a DSCR loan. Now, these usually go up to 75% loan to value. So that means if you're taking cash out, we can go up to 75%. In some instances, we can go up to 80%. Um, but usually on the purchase side, we're going to want to see 25% down, maybe as little as 20% down in some instances. If it's a really, really, really good cash flowing property, maybe even down to 15%. But for the most part, try to stick to the guideline of 25% down for these DSCR loans. Okay. If you're a first time investor and this is an option for you, maybe you don't have a job, then this could be an option. As long as you have cash available, uh, you could definitely get a DSCR loan. So this is available for first time investors. Credit scores down to about, let's say 680. I think I can go lower than that in some instances, but the pricing gets really ugly. That means higher rates, more cost upfront for you. And it's not necessarily the most desirable uh, type of a transaction to be able to do. So the better your credit and the better the property is gonna cash flow, the better terms that you are gonna get. And then lastly, we can do this on uh, single family homes. We can do it on one to four units, so multifamily properties, PUDs, condos, townhomes, all of those different things are available for this and even non warrantable condos in some instances. So as long as you have that equity in that property and it cash flows, non warrantable condos are okay to do. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you guys have any questions about a DSCR loan for short and midterm rental properties, I'd love to be the one that helps you out. <clears throat> you can reach me at my calendar link down below. I'll go ahead and put that in the description and then in the comments. Uh, let's schedule a time. I'd love to talk to you about your next purchase or refinance on a debt service coverage ratio loan. Thanks so much for watching guys and I will look forward to seeing you really soon. Have a good day, bye.